when you're reinstalling the steering rack make sure to install it loosely uh, for now because you still have to put in the bushing and you don't want to bind the threads on onto the frame okay you want to put them on you know directly you want to put them on, you want to make sure that they're on straight when you're replacing the bushing that goes here on the passenger side make sure that this opening right here make sure that this opening is on the side all right that way when you put the bracket back on it'll compress properly the way you have to put this bracket back is that you notice that there's a little arrow that's going towards the front so it's gonna go like this it's gonna go towards the front make sure that you don't get that line right here in the way and just go ahead and put that bracket back on just put it on loosely for now and then just tighten it up when you have it properly on there make sure that it's on straight after putting and locking the wheel to the very very left I'll now attempt to reconnect the steering to uh, the spline this is gonna prove very very difficult because I am underneath this dang car and uh, <laughs> well you just only imagine what this feels like if you've done this before then you already know my pain well you get the idea right after you finally get the spline together go ahead and secure that bad boy in there that way you won't have a hard time trying to get this on after you get the steering rack um, tightened up if you encounter any resistance move this up and down until it latches on to the uh, spline sh shaft that way it locks itself in place like so you see how it's holding itself in place now good that's very good right there just tighten it up I'm not gonna completely tighten it yet because I still gotta tighten up the steering rack onto the frame on the bottom. Time to put everything on. The next thing I started installing was my lines and I made sure that the lines themselves they didn't they didn't have too much pressure on installing the threads which meant that if there was that I run the risk of stripping out the threads on these lines again if you do too much of that you're done because it's, it's gonna take a lot of work to replace these bad boys alright so when you try to thread them back in make sure that it goes in there smoothly it may not be you know smooth the first time around you know as this is a new unit but you're gonna have to try okay all right, now that the bottom is tightened up, the rack is tightened to the frame, I can tighten this now. Because uh, that's not going to move anymore. Make sure it's on there really well because this is involving your steering. Alright. There we go. Before you start turning the steering wheel to the left, make sure that this thing is straight. It's not going to catch this or it's not going to catch anywhere else, okay? Go ahead and reinstall your exhaust manifold down here because you won't have to do any more work down here uh, for the rest of the time being. And don't forget to reconnect your O2 sensor along to the uh, O2 connector. Otherwise, you're going to throw a uh, check engine light. The next thing we're going to be doing is connecting the tie rods. Now, 
remember what I did last uh, before I just dis uh, dismantled this I counted the threads all right now I'm gonna do the same thing all right I'm gonna count I'm gonna count the peaks one two three four five six seven wherever I stopped I keep pushing on that way all right until it meets my guide and then I install this tie rod in making sure that the the install is smooth once you see the uh, bolts slightly starting to turn that means it already already got to that point I'm gonna get this castle nut and I'm gonna go ahead and attach the tie rod to the knuckle now All I gotta do now is just bring this castle nut all the way down to where the hole is down there. Doesn't have to be much, but just as long as you see the hole where you could put your co uh, cotter pin in. Okay, that's about right right there. Same deal for the driver's side, okay? Once I get the proper Lime it in. I make sure that the cotter pin is where it's supposed to be at. I'm going to probably sink it down a little more so that the cotter, uh, the tip, sits all the way in. And then I'm going to go ahead and start tying in the cotter pin so that it doesn't come off. Now I know this is a wire cutter that I'm using but just just be careful not to <laughs> cut this cutter. Okay, I'm only using this because well I can't find my needle nose pliers. So shame on me, I know, blah blah blah. There. All good. Now Right here, you still got to make sure that you still got your seven threads, okay? If you do, you'll be good to go. I got my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, good. Now, I, all I got to do is just tighten up that, that bolt, okay? Now, got to go counterclockwise, tighten up that bolt. Put it on there really good. It is a suspension part after all, so you, you'll want to get meticulous with this. All right, once again, I'm gonna straighten, uh, this time I'm gonna straighten out the tie rod so it doesn't look all bunched up here. Again, I'm gonna confirm my threads. One, two, three, four, five, six seven yep I'm good to go uh, make sure to do it for the other side go ahead and top off your uh, reservoir okay now we're going to fill up our steering rack with fluid so get ready for the annoying noise You see all those bubbles in there? That means that the air is starting to clear up out of the system. So I'm going to have to repeat that a couple of times and make sure to keep the reservoir topped off every time because you don't want to be running this without fluid.
repeat the process as many times as you need to until you clear the air out of the system and no more bubbles develop. Once you confirm that there's no leaks coming from your hoses, go ahead and put the cover back on. Said and done. Go ahead and put your tires back on, both sides. Bring the car back to the ground. Go out for a test drive and go get an alignment. Last but not least, don't forget to put up your steering rack cover back on. Three retaining clips and the two spring clips right there. That pretty much covers the steering rack replacement for the 90-91 Honda Accord. I don't know about the 92-93s, I'm not too familiar with it. It should have pretty much the same setup. However, there's some cars out there that have the SRS system and I'm, I'm sorry to say I'm not familiar, really familiar with that kind of setup when it comes to you know, dealing with you know, the alignment issues on that. Uh, but if, if anything else, if you, like the, you know, if you like what you saw, please throw those thumbs up, hit the share, hit the subscribe button you know, for more. And hey, there's more of these things that's bound to come, all right? Take care. Good luck. Don't do anything crazy out there, you kids. All right? See ya. Bye.